Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. It's Luke Kelsel here from Growing Nature. Today I'm in Costa Rica and I found a permaculture food forest which I'm going to be having a tour around and just show you how food grows in this kind of climate. So let's get into the video. We've just had a tour with the owner of the property and he's just showed us some of the plants that grow here. Right now I'm actually under actually cocoa, cacao trees. Uh, all these trees are actually quite old, but he said the main, it's quite interesting about this, the, the majority of the plants are cacaos are actually pollinated by mosquitoes. A lot of people don't like mosquitoes, but if you're growing cacao, you actually want them because they do a lot of the pollination for you. I'll just try and find a cacao plant. I'll, I'll, overlay, a, I'll overlay a cacao that was eaten earlier because he found the ripe one and gave me the, the cacao fruit. And it's actually, um, you don't eat the bean, like you, you know, the bean is used for chocolate, but you don't eat that raw. You actually eat the flesh, the white flesh around it. And it's like quite a sweet flavor. It doesn't taste like chocolate, it just tastes like a fruit. And that's what they eat for the cacao, yeah, but they process the beans for chocolate. One of the main things that he told me when walking around the property was how they always make sure they have a covering on all the ground. So the leaves obviously leave the leaves to fall for trees, but he says if they don't have enough leaves to keep the ground covered, they actually go into the forest and harvest some leaves and then put them on the floor like this. And they also use a really good technique where they do, it's called chop and drop. Basically they grow trees literally for the purpose of chopping them down machete to then create a natural covering on the ground. This is actually a cacao tree and they've got all the leaves protecting the ground here. He said these are a hurling variety of cacao. They produce for about 40 years before they have to be replanted. Um, but these have been left here because they're, they're a good thing to draw in the squirrels. So then they leave the other cacao fruits alone. This is a relative, relatively new area, but they've still got uh, up here. These are, these plants here, these vines climbing up are actually vanilla plants. I said they're a year old, so they're not producing the vanilla beans yet, but when they get to the next year, they'll have some vanilla beans growing. And that could be them next year, but I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, these are vanilla beans climbing up trees, like a, a vine. See what they've done with the ground, they've left loads of compost, like mulch, natural covering around the base of the trees. Even the tree that fell down, they just left it to rot into the ground. And it's really just creating a good you know, ecosystem. And you can just tell when you walk around this here, obviously it's very, very humid and it's a completely different you know, feeling atmosphere, but the amount of like wildlife, like butterflies, you know, beetles, insects, and obviously there's like monkeys and everything like that, it's in, in Costa Rica. Uh, but when you're going through an area like that, something that I, I noted, he was wearing snake boots. All the locals around here are farmers. You wear snake boots because if you're growing in, in growing in long grass like that, there's a good chance you'll come across some snakes and there's some very venomous snakes in this area. There's a snake, it's called a third lance, and actually if you get bitten, it's a hundred percent amputation rate. It's like two hours to die in. So that's for me, for me, that's why I wouldn't really want to grow food in this kind of climate. But he said to me that he's never really had any issues with them. He knows of a couple of incidents in his lifetime, but he's been farming for like 20 years. So he's he's pretty confident. But again, I wouldn't know it. Wouldn't know where exactly where to look, so I'd be very unsure, you know, walking through grass through the forest, maintaining, you know, especially letting it grow in quite wild like this, where you're not having very clean beds. You have got to be quite aware of the nature you're working around with. This plant here is actually, I can't, it's not edible, but it's actually a natural mosquito repellent. And if you break it off like this, rub it in your hands, and it smells exactly like mosquito repellent. It's like a natural mosquito repellent. I don't use any mosquito repellent, but it's a better alternative to the chemicals you can buy in the supermarket anyway. So that's a good one to have in your garden, especially if you're in a, a tropical climate where there's mosquitoes everywhere. That's a really good one to have in your garden if you want and to avoid getting bitten loads. This massive tree here, this is actually a breadfruit tree. That's the translation anyway. This, he said this produces 300 kilograms of fruit and they're like basically chips. <laughs> he makes them into chips. And I asked him, how do, you, how do you go about harvesting a tree like that? He said, we climb up it, and then we're poking down sticks and catching at the bottom. And uh, somebody else at the bottom catches them in the net. I imagine having that in your own, your own garden. Obviously, it's quite an old tree, you can tell. It's a big tree, and it? it goes all the way up there. Because it's in a jungle, it's searching for light, so it's actually grown up tall than a lot of the other plants because it's been surrounded by so many other trees. This is a, a perennial leaf that they used to cook with. Well, it's just like a lettuce leaf. It's edible. 
it tastes like lettuce, but obviously not to plant it because it's perennial. And uh, yeah, it tastes good. And you want as much of your, your food forest to be perennial as possible, then it's less work for you and more produce. So that's what this whole property has done mostly. And then you've got a little annual garden at the end, which I'm going to get around to. Uh, but like I said, most of the stuff is perennial like this. I actually had a close encounter with a venomous snake yesterday. We were walking through a place similar to this and on the side of the path there was a eyelash viper coiled up basically waiting for a hummingbird to fly past and strike at it to kill it and eat it. But obviously when there's a snake there waiting you need to be careful because you, if you brush your ankle past that it's just going to strike at your ankle as well. So obviously you have to be aware of what you're working with. If you're growing in a place like this you know obviously the ideal thing to do would be to wear snake boots keep your eyes on the ground so you don't get, end up getting bitten. This tree here is actually ice cream, it produces ice cream fruit. And it's here, this. This is the fruit. Again, it turns yellow when it's ready, but that is really heavy. I don't know why they call it ice cream fruit. Again, it's some research, but I'm guessing make some kind of ice cream from it. So this one here, you can tell how well it grows by the color of it. It's actually like a perennial spinach. Uh, again, so you don't have to plant it each year like an annual. And produces loads and loads of leaves. Again, yeah, extremely healthy, extremely nutritious. If you eat and roll like this, um, the size of the leaf and the colour of that, it's unbelievable. But when you chew this one and you eat it, I think that is. Just say it's like a normal spinach leaf, but after you chew it for a little bit, it produces like a jelly, like a it's really hard to explain. It's like a jelly sliver kind of feel over leaf. And apparently it's really good for your stomach and your digestive system. But again, another really, you know, nutrient powerhouse. This one is a really interesting fruit. We use these. Quite thorny. It's called, it's called lime finger. This is like a lime, like a lime fruit. But I'll show you what it looks like inside. Look at that. not moving it's just me squeezing out <laughs> but these are really powerful actually you don't need many of them because it's really strong unbelievably strong it tastes, it tastes like a really strong lime and there's so many on that tree and then i don't know of anywhere else i've seen that grows this fruit other than you know tropical climate like this so we actually are in if you're interested we're in arenal Costa Rica. So this is there's actually a volcano a few miles away from here and it's created an incredibly diverse yeah, set of wildlife. I think in this area alone has the most biodiverse in Costa Rica or one of the most biodiverse in Costa Rica uh, and is known for all the yeah the plant life and the birds uh, and obviously it grows really amazing food but it's it's not uh, by the coast because so by the coast it grows slightly different foods. This is more inland and I said it's more tropical rainforest and there's a lot of jungle around. There is actually wild, a lot of wild cats in this area as well. There's pumas, ocelots, and even jaguars, but you never really see a jaguar because it's so rare. Uh, but there's a puma sighting on this property actually not too long ago. You can see, just like this is a general overview of the property, how wild it all, you know, it, all is. it looks nothing like a tr traditional yeah, monoculture farm. It's just completely wild with just hundreds of species of fruit trees, medicinal plants, just all in a small space, you know, Look at how wild it all looks. It's nothing like just an empty field, that is it. That's, that is a true Costa Rican tropical food forest. This is a, especially an orange tree. They're not ripe yet. See there, the oranges, still green. Um, yeah, oranges grow in this climate as well. These are banana trees. These grow all over the tropical regions. Uh, interesting about banana trees, they produce Basically, one rack of bananas from one tree, and once that tree is produced, it's rack of bananas. The whole tree is chopped down. So, this here, this is one year old. This is a one year old tree, and then from like five months from now, that'll produce a rack of bananas, and then the whole tree will get chopped down. And it'll produce a new banana tree from the base. So, I asked them as well. They said they harvest all the bananas green, so you don't actually wait for them to ripen on the tree and go yellow. And when they're green as well, they do cook them with the, you know, they cook them to make. Uh, banana and plantains. If you're in, you're in uh, Costa Rica, you'll see the traditional breakfast is gallo pinto, which is rice and beans with plantains cooked. So that is why bananas are such a staple in their diet. And also the blossom, the end, I'm trying to see an end of the tree here. Uh, 
you know, the, yeah, the blossom on the end of the fruit, uh, massive flower is also cooked and eaten. I actually asked uh, the, the local what, um, what the season is for fruit production in this kind of, you know, obviously in tropical climate, there's no winter like there is in most of the places where there's seasons, it's just wet and dry season. And they said basically fruit grows all year round. So there's not, never a time of the year where they, you know, the short fruit, it's just different varieties all over, all throughout the year, even bananas, there's different varieties uh, that you know, harvest in different times through the year. This is actually a black peppercorn tree. Well, it's actually both white and black pepper. You can eat them like this. I had one of these before. And to be honest, I'm not gonna have another one again on camera because they are unbelievably strong. You would not believe how, it literally made my, my mouth go on fire. That's how strong it is. And it's literally that small. So he, he said uh, before picking them, he had some children as well. He said, they, just let you know they are very strong. <laughs> so don't let your children go pick a bunch. Imagine if you ate a whole bunch of that. That would, that would probably kill you. But basically, they make, that, make white pepper out of that, and then when these will eventually turn red when they ripen, and then they'll start to die back and go black, and that's when you get black peppercorn. So you can see that's how pepper grows. When you walk through, there's so many little things happening, like down the little paths where there's flowers, there's hummingbirds, you know, going after the flowers, getting the nectar, and then there's lizards, snakes, obviously there's toucans, scarlet macaws, which are the red parrots, uh, and yeah, just so many birds you wouldn't even know exist unless you go to a, a place like this. So then that's the, that's the banana, banana blossom I was talking about. So you can cook and eat them as well. And I think they are a bit of like a meat substitute, but I've never tried it. Again, each one of these trees, you can see, even though they're like over five meters tall, they're one year's growth. So you can see how fast it grows when it gets, you know, the, this heat from the tropical climate mixed with the rainfall in like a rainforest. Everything just like explodes and grows just so fast. This is a, uh, this I find this quite funny. <laughs> I thought the, the guide was joking when he said this. But this is a termite, termite nest. And he just went and put his finger in and said, do you want some termites? You can eat them. And he just licked his finger and said, yeah, these are edible. They're actually really good for protein. Oh, it's just, that's just disgusting. He said, the thing is though, these uh, termites, they're actually, uh, if you get them in your house here, because a lot of the structures in Costa Rica are built from wood, um, yeah, wooden structures, they will literally destroy the foundation of the house. So if you have them, that's a big problem. But he said they're a good food source to have around. <laughs> just when he stuck his finger and got some. So, you know, I didn't have any of them because I don't want, I don't eat any, any animal products and I'd consider a termite an animal. So, or a little insect at least. This plant here, I'm not going to eat it on, eat it again. I had one of these before. It's actually a really, it's a medicinal leaf. Uh, with really strong, yeah, I don't know, nutritional properties, but it's extremely bitter. He actually, it, believe it or not, well, he said this, the English translation of Spanish word is bitter leaf. <laughs> so, so you know how strong it is. And to me, to me, if something's that bitter, which it is extremely bitter, uh, it's a sign you shouldn't be eating it. I know like some medicinal herbs have different flavors and some might be strong, but to me, that's just, that's getting ridiculous. You don't want to eat something that your body's telling you to spit out straight away because it's so strong. That's why most of the food you pick from the garden just tastes so nice. It's a sign that it's right to be eating it. That's what I think anyway. Versus stuff like that, where I think it's just so bitter. It's almost inedible. This uh, flower here, this is really good for hummingbirds. Uh, they come and stick the snout in there and get all the beak. Really long. Is it beak and snout? I don't know. They lick the nectar out anyway. Uh, but it has, this leaf has psychedelic properties and a lot of the locals use it to basically have a psychedelic experience and usually end up in hospital, that's what you say, because they don't know the right dosage. You know, if you're having something like that, which I don't want to be, make sure you know the right usage. You don't want to overdose. <laughs> so this is another banana tree. You can see the height, look at that. This is one year's growth. Look at the rack of bananas up there. Again, when this is time to harvest it, you'll get a machete and just chop the whole tree down at the base. And look at this one here. This is another banana tree that's growing. So once they chop down that tree, that's the one that takes its place and then we'll start producing fruit for the next couple of years. So this, so, there's so many of them that's growing wild. Like obviously they planted them initially and now they're just self-maintaining. Like, so that's the key to having like a perennial food forest. You don't have to maintain it. It's not like you know, in the garden weeding every day. Look, it's just growing wild. If anything, they want weeds because it's, it's the ground cover 
helps feed the soil because the roots are so important. And that was something else he said before about uh, what they had with the soil, soil structure in this area, because you have quite a lot of landslides. You plant this grass that has roots that go three meters deep and it helps to hold the soil in place to stop landslides. And that's what I'm saying. When you have like, again, all the stuff in the same, same space, you not just have bare soil, have everything doing its role, the weeds even have a role. You know, they're holding the soil, they're feeding the soil. You know, they're bringing energy or car, no, turning, drawing in energy and the roots, you know, going through the soil, either breaking up. They all have their own roles. You know, I don't know the full details of it, but that's the whole reason of working with nature and not stripping your garden bare. You want to invite the wildlife because it's there for a reason. And you can't get on camera the climate we're actually in. The feel in the air is very humid. As soon as the sun comes out, it's roasting hot but then it rains extremely heavy. So it's like a constant cycle of just pouring rain, hot sun, you know, strong humidity, high humidity. Uh, and it, I think that is probably one of the best climates because it has no winter and summer, no like no set seasonal, no winter where the food doesn't grow. It's just fruit all year round and just stuff just grows everywhere. I think it might be monkey in the tree over there. It's interesting because I asked him about, I asked him about pests and he said, um, Monkeys aren't actually too big a problem. Usually the pests are the squirrels. And they also have quatties, which is, if you don't know what is, look up online. It's quite a nice looking animal, really, really friendly. But also leaf cutter ants as well. They also, if, you have, if you're growing lettuces, they'll come and cut all your lettuces and carry them away to the den. You know you've got a problem if you're growing lettuces and then you see a couple of leaf cutter ants, then they'll send the whole pack in to take them out. This is one of the most popular food well not food yeah plant that grows in costa rica and it's the tradition of the country it's actually a coffee coffee bean plant so this here basically that's what happened these are the coffee beans here but they'll turn red when they're ready and you can actually i see there's a ripe one there's no right one here again look you see it's growing in the shade under this massive canopy of a tree but these again the coffee bean they go red and you can actually eat the fruit and then the bean itself you can process to make coffee from. So this, this is actually a little pineapple patch. These have already been harvested, but basically this is a year and a half old uh, and it will produce a pineapple. This will be a year and a half old and it will produce a pineapple here on top and they go and cut the pineapple off. And then next year's fruit will be produced on a new side shoot. So basically there's a new side shoot there that will then grow and take over this plant and that's where the pineapple will be. So again, it's like a, kind of like a perennial, but more just one pineapple per plant. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, doesn't it? But <laughs> pineapples grow. You would just walk past that thinking it's just a normal plant. But pineapple. Again, I've not been able to get every single fruit on camera, but they do also grow mangoes, uh, passion fruits, uh, star fruits, coconuts. These even, even grow jackfruits. So jackfruits are massive. You'll see a video of jackfruits like this big and they're like a meat substitute. Uh, but just all this just grows here, all of it. You know, um, like I said, I can't get everything on camera because the property is very big and they've got hundreds of, hundreds of varieties of fruit trees, but I'm just covering the main area which, where they've sent uh, the permaculture tour through because obviously if you go into the jungle where there's no paths or trails, you're going to run into some more wildlife and potentially snakes. So if you don't want people going around just looking in into the jungle. Yeah, that's just something you have to consider. If you go to a tropical climate, you're going to have to put with more like, you know, snakes, spiders, like bananas, they have a lot of Brazilian wonder spiders. I don't know if in this region specifically they have them, but I know when you have some bananas, you attract, again, more deadly spiders and insects. Uh, another one that's quite funny that they talked about, all the locals say this, there's something called a bullet ant. Like, that big, just black, jet black, and they don't have a big nest to go with, they're just a lone ant, and they have the most powerful sting or bite in the world out of any other insect. It's 24 hours of just pure pain. Like being shot. This is a funny fruit. This one. This one is called a uh, lipstick tree or lipstick fruit. It's not edible. It's basically like a. I'll try and. It's a. Like a war paint. Um, it's used in cosmetics and it's used to colour, colour certain foods. You see from that, it's just like really strong red. Uh, yeah, it's used for. It smells nice, actually. Yeah, it's used in cosmetics and colouring food. So this is the main annual garden of the property. Again, you can see they've got a lot of cabbages, celery, tomatoes, you know, lettuces over there. 
onions, but they're growing it all in raised beds. Again, they're doing the principle of laying on top, no dig. It's all regenerative agricultural practices and permaculture practices. So they're never disturbing the soil structure and always, yeah, composting on top, adding uh, dead grass like that to, to mulch on top of the ground. But something interesting about growing food in Costa Rica, I was always unsure about this, so it was good to, I got a chance to ask a local how they deal with the conditions. I asked, I asked him about how they deal with heavy rainfall and also the strong heat, because it obviously affect the plants. And he said they're not, they basically can't direct sow because when they sow in the soil, when it rains really heavy, it just washes the, so the seeds out. So they have to usually either sow seeds under cover or transplant, uh, like they've transplanted here, into the raised beds. And also he said, because the sun can get quite intense in the summer or in the dry season, uh, the lettuces, it can be too hot for the leaves and it can dry them up. So they have to put shade nets over some of the foods. So obviously for like a tropical leaf that's, you know, really strong, big leaves, they don't have any problems growing in the heat, but when you're growing like just standard lettuces or tomatoes, you might have to have some protection from the, the elements of like the tropical climate. Something else interesting about this, I asked the local again, uh, is there any time of year that you, know, you, you plant or harvest? And he said, no, everything just grows at any time of year. You basically plant what you want, when you want, and it grows just fine. Cause again, there's no winter. Uh, there's no like freeze to worry about. It literally is just growing it. Obviously in the summer in direct sun, might need to shade some certain foods, but fruit fruit and just food just grows all year round. There's no like you know, set time of year to do anything. So like I said, they've got tomatoes along there. These are all celery plants. And they got, again, you can see how they mulched it naturally there uh, with some dead grass. And they've got aubergines growing. Got an aubergine there uh, next to some kale. So it really is just a good, yeah, good annuals garden. But like I said, most of the food in this property is perennial, like, like I showed before, the lettuces, the perennial spinach, all the fruits. It's what the whole idea of having a food forest, you want as much of the food forest to be perennial as possible, because then it's less work for you. Sweet potatoes grow really well, that's a good staple for the diet. And also yuccas, yuccas are similar to sweet potatoes, but grow yeah, really well here, and they're incredibly easy to grow. In fact, yuccas, I think they grow us like a stem. You know, they grow big actually, very, very fast. And when you harvest them, you basically have the tree that's like this big, it basically goes a tree in a year. You snap one of the sticks off and just stick it in the ground and that's your yucca planter for the next year. This is another really interesting tree. I didn't recognize it when I first saw it, but this, snap the stick off. That's actually cinnamon. Cinnamon is, the bark is used for the cinnamon. Uh, so when you buy a cinnamon stick, you get the bark from this and it smells. Yeah, just like cinnamon. Pretty amazing that. It's amazing how, how good that smells. It just looks like a normal stick. I thought the guy was having a joke when he just picked a stick off, stick off the tree and then gave it to me and said, look at that. Like, I expected me just to know what it was, but then he said, smell it. And yeah, I thought straight away it's cinnamon. So we're actually heading into dry season now. So basically December each year marks kind of the end of wet season. We have more rainfall and now it's more six months of more sun and less rainfall uh, and hotter temperatures. So it literally is split, their season usually is split between wet and dry season. They don't have you know, winter, autumn, spring, summer, they don't have any of that, it's just wet and dry season. And six months in between, six months of the year each. I just, I just found it really interesting walking through with this guy showing us what's growing. Because a lot of the stuff that he's talking about, I have no idea what it is, what he's saying, because it's just a completely new set of foods that you can't grow anywhere else. Obviously they export a lot of the you know, bananas and pineapples to tropical fruits to where we, you know, to what we eat in the UK. But yeah, just the standard foods that he's talking about, the leaves or whatever it is, even just seeing stuff grow like cinnamon, it's just like a completely new uh, set of skills to learn how to grow in this kind of climate. So it, I find it very interesting and I hope you found the video, interest, video interesting as well. Hopefully it just sort of shows you what it's like growing in a tropical climate because this is a really good example of a permaculture food forest right in the center of Costa Rica, which is full on tropical climate. As you can see, it is very, very different to what you expect to see in the Mediterranean or UK. Just completely new foods, you know, completely different conditions. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.